Uh, for most part, I'm a consultant on the Microsoft Technology staff, but sometimes I, you know, uh, maybe I can do all sorts of things in mobility and the modern web platform. I'm also a speaker. Uh, one of the perks that of being at Neodesic is that um, you get some uh, contribution and uh, recognition from the community, so I got opportunities at writing a few books. Um, so far, I've uh, written three books, uh, the third one coming out in just about a month. Uh, it's on uh, Dynamics CRM, Marketing Automation with Dynamics CRM 2020. So if you get a chance, you can get your hands on of that. I uh, also do a column at Dynamics, which is called Enterprise Issues. For the most part, I share my thoughts on some of the challenges as developers we face uh, in day in, day out. And some of the things I keep exploring. So, you know, you can, that's the URL. You can take a look at my blog and maybe share your thoughts. And if there are any topics that you want to hear about, I'd be more than happy to share my ideas around that. The reason there is a condition supply is because it's still in preview. So, Although it's uh, great to explore around and play around it and you know, uh, gather data and do some analytics on top of it, but my recommendation would be to not use it yet on a production system. Uh, it's not production ready. More than the losses at analytics, you might find your broad applications crashing. So do not take a dig yet. Uh, it's uh, you know wait out till it's uh, it's at least in some release form right before you start using it directly on a production server right so it's good to experiment around dev servers or staging servers or you know just play around for that. Um, I will talk about the agenda for the next one hour uh, maybe in a bit but you know I want to address uh, a very important question. So um, I want to address a very important question before we go ahead so that you get a context around what the problem scenarios are today that we're trying to deal with. And then let's take a look at the approach and how we can solve some of them, right? I'm not sure that whether we can solve all of them, but at least some of them. Uh, so our uh, question is, why application monitoring? It's a very trivial question if you look at, right? It doesn't have a lot of meat around it, but the context that I'm trying to put here is applica the application monitoring uh, features and what we do today has evolved significantly from what it used to be before. So there is a different perspective altogether in terms of how we are doing application monitoring today, right? And I want to cover a few scenarios around um, what application monitoring in general entails. Uh, and then you would be able to appreciate how application insights is able to solve some of those problems today. Give you real insight and how you can find application is production support. As developers, we often never get opportunities to debug into a production system. Uh, so there is a whole industry that's feeding around it. Um, that's the support industry where you get application support. The most important job there you're doing is probably being reactive, uh, putting in diagnostic trace information for the most part, right? Um, you're able to include exception handling and that's what the IT team gives you back, saying that, hey, you know, there is the exception now, something is going wrong, just go figure out, okay? So, um, for the most part, you're left with that, uh, being reactive, looking at skimming through some exception information. If you have uh, a lot of time at hand, you do more than exception handling, you do instrumentation. Uh, you put traces of code, uh, stepping through method entries, parameter validations, and then exception handling, of course, right? That gives you a little bit more robust information in terms of what's going on inside the application, right? Um, on that, that has stemmed into another set of industries, which is the health desk industry, what I call it in general, right? Support and ticketing systems. You have, now you have rolled out your application, now you pay this company. Okay, I think we should wait for a second. For a second. Perspective in terms of 
why do we need application monitoring in today's world? Right? So I was uh, carrying that thought talk to it. Um, so what industry that has stemmed out of uh, application production support is help desk. Uh, it's really customers who are exploring an application, getting some sort of an experience out of it. Uh, good or bad, they are trying to create a ticketing system where they pour in uh, their issues, and then a set of people are looking at those issues and raising estimations around them. Right? So there is a whole industry that is formed around production support. What that truly does is create a feedback loop back to the developing teams, uh, helping them decide whether they need to create a patch and put it on the fix, or you know they have to look at validating some sort of enhancements that it needs to build to make that application experience better. Right? So if you look at all these files, this is all what we do, right? I mean, there's not much uh, in what we are doing, what could innovate this industry in, in some sense or other, right? But there is a lot more. If I move forward, um, customers want to know how much they are paying for the server cost, right? What truly is the user experience by using the application, right? Are they getting stuck at trying to buy a product, getting some sort of exceptions, right? Uh, are customers able to get or create that brand loyalty that they can come back and talk about, you know, I had a real good online experience exploring your application, right? So there is a lot of factors that stem into uh, the online business, right? So if you're creating an app or if you're creating a web application, the owners really want to know what the true performance of that application is, right? Um, you want to know how the availability of the application, uh, there are still seeds you can, excuse me, uh, there is looking at screens trying to see if you know, something is going wrong or not on a 24 by 7 basis, there is a cost to it, and then trying to report uh, you know, whether your system is up or not. And then if it is not up, there is really not much they can do uh, other than reaching out to their IT team and just creating a chaos in terms of, hey, what do you have to do now, right? So there is no granularity in terms of, do I really know my application is up or not? I mean, do I really know is the application up or not from every geographic location that I'm serving today, right? Do I know if my application is running as fast as it should, whether it's being used by users from Russia or it's being used by users from USA or some other country, right? So do we really know that? And um, the turn of this decade, you'd see there is a burst of, um, uh, there is a burst in cloud technologies that have come up, trying to you know, replace traditional uh, um, on-premise uh, server setups. And uh, what that has done is given the customers uh, identification and edge in terms of if they are able to preempt the information, if they know beforehand what is going on in terms of the performance or the user activity in my applications, can I feed in that information to really know where I need to scale up my servers or scale down my servers, right? Christmas, I'm doing a lot of business. I need to be able to scale up. But am I getting that information beforehand in a very preemptive fashion, right? Not being reactive, not somebody creating a ticket, hey, this is Christmas time, your application is not working. No, not that, right? Do I know beforehand? Uh, is the IT team, the development team, they are able to get that awareness beforehand and be able to act on that um, in a preemptive fashion, right? So if you look at the whole uh, 360 wheel of application support is not the same anymore, right? Customers are getting more demanding. They really know what they want, and then there are options that they can choose to whether uh, how much cost they're putting in in terms of uh, getting the ROI on the applications that they're uh, using, right? And then there's another side of the story. If you recall the web application in the late 90s, or early 90s, the 90s uh, decade, it would be a truly fancy thing to put a visit counter on your website, right? Uh, people would really fancy that, how many people have visited my website. Um, if you look at the evolution from there, today you really know the customer demographics by the IP information. You know from which geographic region your customers are coming and visiting your application, right? 
that information is feeding into uh, more parts around, okay, now I know which areas they're coming from, do I know how are they using the application, which pages are they spending the most time on, how much time are they really spending with my application, right? what kind of products are they buying. So if you look at this information is funneling into each other and it's giving more ideas to people, right? Uh, that is also sorts of creating a sense of loyalty uh, in the, the marketing side, right? People are trying to realize, okay, now I have this set of users. Are they all new users? Do I have returning customers? Is somebody really coming back to my site and buying another product for the second time? Right? So can I have that information, right? Really powerful. Uh, you can do what not from a marketing perspective if you have that kind of information. Um, you can really influence purchase interest, right? You know that this customer bought this product last time. He's a returning customer. Maybe I have a similar product which is better. Can I ask him? Can I tell the customer that, hey, you know, this product is available at a discounted price, which is much better than what you bought last time, right? So you now are able to set and follow interest in customers in influencing their buying decisions, right? Um, in the 90s, you couldn't have thought about that, right? More than the visit counter. Um, you are also, imagine if you're able to identify demographics, you're able to identify what kind of browsers the customers are uh, accessing my application from. Uh, is the experience better in some browsers? Am I seeing a downtrend in users where the browser is Chrome or IE? Right? Or is the experience coming better in terms of whether the browser is Firefox or something else? Right? So you have to make that kind of decision now. What environment are they really using it for? And all this information, if you plot in a time graph in a scale of 24 hours a day, month, year, you would now, when you analyze that information in that time graph, you would now realize that uh, you suddenly have so much data that you can analyze on and take, make actionable. Uh, that data is really actionable, right? You can make some decisions based on the data, right? You can really perceive user behavior over a period of time, right? Is that application brand value decreasing or increasing over a period of time, right? Are my online assets more valuable than they were before or not, right? What kind of users am I catering to, right? Is there a geographic demographics where users are more interested in some sort of products, right? And uh, from a marketing standpoint, that ultimately lets you upsell, right? You can actually market some products better than others the way you want to. Okay. So if you connect these two dots, the performance aspects, uh, the monitoring aspects, and the usage aspects, you, if you plug these two together, you now have a 360 degree holistic view of your online assets. If you have a web application, a web service that's been consumed, and then if you have mobile apps that users are downloading, you now suddenly have the power to decide and influence the behavior in terms of how you're paying to post some of those items and how you're influencing the customers for sale, right? So you have a 360 degree, web 360, mobile 360 degree view of, um, or a vision of how you can be influencing some of these decisions. So, back to agenda. That was the problem set. How are we going to solve this, right? What tools do we have? If we have time today, end of the day, I will do a comparison analysis of the different tools that are out there in the market, and maybe how App Insights stands out from some of them, but then I get time permits. But today, in general, let's look at uh, how we can set application insights. So we try and understand how application insights is going to some, solve some of these challenges for you. Uh, we'll um, look at how you can set up application insights for your application. And as a developer and as uh, maybe a DevOps or a person who is looking at uh, gaining uh, some knowledge from this information, how you can very easily, right? You have two aspects, one of the development aspects, where you can create a lot of trace and instrumentation. And then there is the management aspects, where you can look at some of this information and uh, take action from it. Right? So we'll look at both sides. How you can get deep insights in terms of the performance and the diagnostic data that you're capturing, observing it over a timeline. 
Uh, you look at usage uh, insights, the usage insights that I just talked about, the features that the users are using, the environment, the user behavior, the loyalty behavior, some of that we'll explore. Uh, again, a fancy term, outside in monitoring, but you know, I just touched upon that. When you're looking at availability perspective of an application, you are only looking at maybe whether the application is running fine or not from a very high level, right? It's not granular, right? You're not looking at whether all the requests have been served to the customers in an appropriate fashion. Did you have the same experience across all the pages that, that you visited, right? So we we'll look at how, from an outside perspective, you can create a system that would use a test case, right, and run it in a repeated fashion to explore some of the features of your uh, application. You can create a test suite out of it, and then use that test suite to understand the availability metrics of your application. Okay, so we'll look at that. All right, so uh, would not like to waste more time and just really get started on how we can get up and running on using application insights. Uh, there are, of course, some prerequisites. Well, to use application insights, you definitely need an app uh, or uh, a application, right? So, uh, conveniently use those terms interchangeably as you want. Um, now, here's the deal: you can use Visual Studio. There is a seamless integration between Visual Studio 2013 and application insights. So, if you are using Visual Studio, you have an edge, right? But then, if you're using Visual Studio 2012, it's not that you're deprived. It takes a few more steps uh, to configure application insights if you're using Visual Studio 2012, right? So these are the two tools you would need. If you're using Visual Studio 2013, you would need Visual Application Insight tools for Visual Studio 2013. And if you install this tool, it's not more than two clicks that you're up and running on collecting trace information and using it intelligibly in App, app Insights, right? But if you're using Visual Studio 2012, you would have to use the application insights SDK, and then do a few configuration steps to uh, you know ensure that you are actually set up application insights against your application. So, this tool is useful for the environment or Uh, okay, excellent question. Um, you will be using Visual Studio to set up application insights. Now here is the deal. No IT manager will give you access to, if you tell an IT manager, hey, you know what, on the production system, I'm going to go install a tool and then use it to uh, monitor the application, then go wild. Right, so. Yeah, so why I'm saying Visual Studio is, Visual Studio is where I'm assuming that you would be developing your web application on. So you would use the application insights tools to configure application insights on your web application. And then as a package, when you deploy, some of the dependencies that application insight has or requires would get deployed along with the web application without requiring an IT intervention. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, so that is the intent. It's not that you have to install Visual Studio. You might as well debug, right? By by using application insights at all. If you have to use Visual Studio in a production system, sorry. Um, there is though uh, one thing, that little thing, right? Uh, you need Microsoft monitoring agent. Now this is something that needs to be installed on the production system. Uh, you can live without it. Uh, it will not let you prevent using application insights, but without this, you will not get the performance data. Okay. So now, if you really want to collect performance data, you need to have this. And if you are in the Microsoft ecosystem, like if you're using Visual Studio, uh, if you're building your apps uh, using SP.NET, right, and then if you're also using Windows Azure to host them. Uh, then there is something called as startup tasks where you can create a command shell and then run a bunch of scripts there to be able to automatically deploy the application when you are publishing the application into, let's say, Azure web browser. 
right? So the ecosystem is supported, but then I have uh, one of the applications that I'm hosting here for my demo is in App Harbor. App Harbor will not let me install performance tools, right? So I cannot install MMA in App Harbor, so it would not let me capture performance data. Okay. So that's that's the caveat uh, you know have to watch out for. But if it's your uh, production system and you're able to convince IT, uh, um, most IT organizations are aware of MMA. MMA is not our app inside, just that you know. So it's stem out of SCOM, System Center Operations Manager. So most IT organizations should be confident in installing <coughs> MMA uh, because it's so tightly coupled and they should be very familiar with this term. But if they don't allow, you don't have it. Right. Correct. So yes, if you are using SCOM, you can just download a package and then deploy. Right. So it should be smooth sailing with your IT, but they are like weird guys. Right? Never know. Yeah. No, no. It has to be a cloud service. It has to be a cloud service. A good question. Yeah, so that's the big, you have to install this really. Uh, so let's get to it. Um, so I have a couple of applications here. Uh, uh, one is, this one is called the Contoso University. The source is freely available in Cortex. You can download and just play around with this web application. I really need it. didn't need to build one, so I just used one. Um, if you install the application inside Stool, you have to download it from NSDN, and then once you install the Visual Studio tools for application insights uh, for 2013, as I said, it's an automated setup. Um, when you create a new project, uh, let's say you're creating a web project, uh, you'd see this option right here. You can see on the right hand side, add application insights to your project. So the matrices will be built in when you're building a SP.NET web application from ground up. If you're not building an application from ground up, if you're uh, you are trying to deploy application insights on an existing application. What will happen is once you have the application and app insights is not configured, if you right click, here you're saying open application insights portal. Instead of that, you'll see an application, you'll see a command called uh, install app insights, right? Or deploy app insights. Instead of uh, the open side, uh, you'll get deploy app insights. So uh, I can quickly show you that. Let's just do without app insights. And you know, add application insights, tell you if you this is the option you get. If you don't have an uh, in existing application, which probably is the case, right? So, okay, I did. Um, so that's one option, and then once you deploy that, you'll see there is a configuration file that comes with it. There are a bunch of options to skim through. There are a set of licenses that you'll see, a set of codes that you'll have to use for in instrumentation across different areas of instrumentation that you want to. Um, you will see options in terms of what kind of data you want to collect from them, right? First thing is application insights enabled to, that has to be true by default. But you know, if you want to play around with the configuration, if you want to turn on off, depending on some environments, right? If you're creating a release config, if you're creating a stage config, or some other sorts of configuration, you can then play around with this if you want to enable app insights for some environments or not. Um, you could uh, do uh, a lot of, OK, you, you can define entry points. By default, the entry point will be global, right? So the application entry point. But then if you want some other additional namespaces to be captured as part of uh, application insights telemetry, you can define it. Um, what you can also do is you can tell app insights um, some of the counters that you'll be collecting, right? So let's say you may want to collect the performance counters or not. There is a contribution for that. Uh, whether from a usage standpoint, right, there are some information that you can collect. Uh, 
Yeah, so if you you know want to collect the IP address of the customers that are using your application. So there are different sorts of configuration you can play around this. Right? So when you have application insights ready, um, once you try um, uh, build a solution and then uh, you know for once you can go and say open app insights in portal. So uh, before you deploy App Insights to a production environment, App Insights will let you check whether the configurations are correct or not. Are you able to successfully capture data from App Insights or not? So that is something you'll be able to see here. Okay, so I open the portal. Now I go to Concourse University and just run it. So you run it, so you browse a few pages here and there. And go back to your application insights portal, and you'll see that the raw event stream starts populating data on that dashboard. Right? So all activities that you're doing, it would be an indicator that you are all set with application insights. Now we are ready to deploy it into production and start capturing some of this data. Right? So uh, that's the indicator. You can actually go and look at, click on the diagnostics tab. Uh, look at the streaming data, and the streaming data will tell you the exact set of events that us that application insights will start capturing already. Right. So this is based on the development environment. So this is some, some of the configuration uh, and instrumentation is happening here, right? Um, I can go to dashboard and if you go to Pentaso University, uh, you'd see the local matrices, the events that have been captured by run that locally. Uh, you look at the application usage, we'll come to this metric again in a bit. Um, you would also see the availability aspects, you know, how the application has been. You may see some dips that would help you determine whether that was a deployment or a downtime period. So the graph will let you analyze that kind of information. So uh, this is about getting set up. So this will help you set up application insights. Uh, so a few steps. Configure app insights in uh, Visual Studio 2013, run the tools. That's all basically you need. Uh, and then you know run the app locally once you have configured. Then connect your account. When you're running the app locally, you have to connect to your App Insights account. And then the, once the connection happens, uh, the data will start streaming in from your local development machine to App Insights. That will ensure that you are all set up, up and running. Now you can deploy and start capturing data. Right? This is all the steps. Right? No configuration. Um, to be honest, I don't have a mail. Right? So I don't think. Now, if you ask Microsoft, they would say Unimo. Uh, there is uh, barely no over it. But maybe we'll know for over a period of time how it is. Right? It's too early to predict. I mean, it's just arrived. Uh, we don't even know. Uh, but you know the story that they will spin around this? If you're using SCOM already, or if you're using some sort of monitoring, tools already, if you're using New Relic, if you're using some third-party monitoring tools, uh, it would be comparable. Right? So it would uh, yep. uh, I don't think that's, that the story is around huge impact. Uh, if you go ask your IT uh, the same question, they would be saying that probably you're using a storm already, right? which is new application monitoring uh, on the servers already. Um, sometimes you even use IntelliTrace. I don't know if you've, uh, last year I did the section on IntelliTrace. So if you're using IntelliTrace already, that's sitting behind the scenes capturing the data uh, and then giving those inputs to developers who are able to do a historical debug, right? So you're already doing some sort of performance monitoring on the servers, right? And App Insights is going to be more different than what they are doing from a performance perspective. It's definitely going to be feature rich. 
So that will be the story for Apple Strikes. Question here. Do you do the stacks? Uh, yes, so uh, I'll come how you can get capture all the exception information, how you can do tracing, right? So I'll, I'll show all that demo. Just, just bear with me. One question. Yeah. Uh, whether like uh, uh, application downtime is due to some resource issues or like because of some logging or like if my application is running 24 by 7 and uh, 365 days. So somewhere after six months, like because of some logging or some uh, resource issues, if it is downtime, so whether this helps in capturing that? Uh, not directly, but uh, there are different. So you have to understand that uh, this is not a, this is not going to do magic for you, right? Uh, it will let you put counters at different positions and then aggregate that information in one place. Instead of using 10 different tools for doing 10 different things, you could do everything at the same place. Help marketing, help performance teams, help IT, right? All of that coming under one umbrella, and the information is correlated. Okay? So it's just not the availability metric, maybe, right? But then you may be able to correlate the availability metric when you're looking at a timeline. You may be able to correlate with some performance metric data around the same timeline. Which is configurable, and then you can you know compare those two data, uh, and then maybe come to a conclusion, right? So it will empower you, right? It will not mm, magic start shouting at you, hey, you know you did this wrong. It's not going to do that. There are a few other tools in the market which actually does that. Oh, uh, so yeah, I think I think would be more than interested in exploring those, okay. right? But yes, so um, I have a metric comparing some of the tools that are there in the market today, right? And maybe if I get time, I'll show you the comparison. Uh, there is no means to tell you that this is the best tool out there in the market. It's not even out there in the market. So the judgment is not out. What I'm trying to tell you is this another option. Right? Okay. Right. This will give more insight on the application side, mm -hmm. where like we, it will help us to go and see like where actually the application issue is. Mm -hmm. uh, but those will tell like where in the resource part, like which application is actually taking more resources. Uh, it will, I mean, yeah, from a, you know, if you're looking at if the CPU meters are high or not, or even you know, if the memory consumption is high or not, yes, we will do that. So, uh, you know, our uh, uh, completely. So, yes, we will do that. Uh, um, <laughs> yes, uh, free for now. If you get convinced enough, Microsoft to give you access. So, it's, it's uh, free for now. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure when they release it, there will be a uh, dollar value. Is there any URL that you Good question. In Visual Studio? Uh, so, I didn't get the question right. Coming so in. They're not doing the different. If they're pushing to pushing by the bad notification engine, they're different accounts. If they're pushing by the different engine, I still didn't get it. I mean, <coughs> how there is nothing called as dead notification. Please do not have that notion. This is not a dev system. This is not for your ability to debug. So you have to come out of that mindset altogether. This is for production. If you want to see something in the world environment, then you can... No, this is not the tool. Go debug. <laughs> <laughs> right? So no, this is not this is not the place for it. Yeah, I think it was like, where is the application and the other one? All the results have been used to this user. Yeah, so you are not seeing this here because I have already configured. But when you are configuring, right, for the first time, it will ask for your app inside credentials. So the real place where you are asking it is, you go log into Azure portal, so there it is, I'll show you, since you asked. Uh, oh, sorry. And let me open my actual account. So the way you are segregating is you have all the applications here. Every metric has a drop down for another application. You choose the application for which you want to see the metric. 
you see me? Uh, you have two applications. I have two applications deployed here. If I have configured, let's say, in your scenario, an application locally in my uh, IIS, and I've connected it to App Insights, it will also get listed here under the applications. And every metric that you see, let's go to availability. Every metric that you see will have a drop down of the list of applications that are configured. And your dashboard is not a generic dashboard for all applications that are out there. It's application specific. Okay, so the application that you've configured for, the dashboard will reflect the information only for that application. It's not a, it's not a generic. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it could be similar, but you know, you have to name them differently here. This is not for your local application. Uh, yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to. Maybe my uh, words are not convincing enough, but that's what I have been trying to, you know, convey for uh, so long. Uh, yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> and again, as I said, every metric is isolated by application. So if you are trying to do usage, as you said, and you're trying to see the information coming from different geographic locations, it would still be by application. So you have to go to the application that you want to monitor, you have to go to the environment, the variables that you want to monitor, and then in the global, that would give you the information that right like, now it's not collecting data about global, but when you go to go global, it will tell you a map, a pie chart of users that are coming from different geographic locations that are accessing your application. But it is by application. It is not a generic metric of all applications. It's not doing that. Right? We can Uh, I'm not trying to capture any metric. I'm just trying to make sure that application insights is working fine. And then it will be able to capture those metrics. And from the developer machine, there's not a lot of no other significance of that role. There is nothing. It's just to test and ensure that application insights is working fine. So all these environment variables are actually done on site. Yes, correct. So what you want to capture, there are two ways of doing it. Either you can capture it here, or you can define in App Insights. There are some configurations you can do from the portal itself, or you go and modify the config file. Can we configure this for Windows application and web services? You can configure this for web services. You cannot configure this for Windows applications. You can configure this for Windows Phone, mobile, and you can configure this for Windows Store applications. So Windows Store, Windows Phone, web, be it web services or websites. How about when an app, app uh, Windows desktop application crashes and Windows Center uh, like When a desktop app crashes, there is nothing you can do about it, except that the service that it is dependent on, if that had something to do about it, you'll be able to capture that information. But if a Windows Phone app crashed or a Windows Store app crashed, you'd be able to get that information. You'd be able to know how many apps around the globe are being installed in user devices today and be able to determine which apps are working fine and which apps are not. So not be traditional No. Nope. <coughs> Move away. It's old world. Is it going to be available for 2008 and 2010? No, absolutely. But that said, this is not only meant for Visual Studio. Uh, this is just a bunch of configuration files. You can still create a folder structure on your web application, or just copy this config file, deploy it directly in your uh, server through your publication mechanism that you're using today. This has got nothing to do with Visual Studio, just so that you understand it. Right? Okay, so it will still capture. If you have application insights configuration, it will still capture all this information. All this information. Is okay. it only for .js um, it is. It supports Java. So, but you know, I haven't personally explored how it does on the Java side. I don't have direct feedback. But uh, from the claims of the website, it does support Java services. But web services, any form, right? Uh, web app, web applications, um, ASP.NET, uh, Windows Phone, and Windows Store. So, should we define cloud or? Uh, a server. 
uh, a production server. It could be cloud, 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 on-premise, hybrid, whatever. For Java, it is probably similar, like configuring the IA server. So, yes, interesting. I don't have uh, enough information to tell you whether it would work on a web sphere. Uh, in what format you work, but that's something to explore. So if you have gotten a subscription of App Insights, please do explore. Uh, I have my email address, of the, you know, if you have some experience that you'd like to share, I, I would love that how it works on the Java side. Is there any limitation with Sorry? Is there any limitation with Like, uh, it supports only module 4.4? Yes, uh, very, very good question. Uh, yes, 4.5, one words. Yeah, so now the Java configuration is different. So they are supporting Java, right? From a .NET perspective, it has to be 4.5 or higher. Just let me understand. From a Java side, as I said, I don't know what they're doing. Uh, but that's something you can explore and you know, let me know how it works out. So I think we can, if we can go down the clearish sessions, uh, we probably, oh no, we are almost running out of time. So let me, let me wrap up how much I can and then you know, let me go through the demos, you'll get a very clear perspective, right, what I'm trying to tell you. A lot of questions what you're asking are ahead of time. Uh, you know, if I finish my demos, you'll be able to have those answers on your own. So let me just uh, go through the demo uh, here. Um, okay, so back to, for just a second uh, on, the, on the deck. Uh, so I configured, uh, you know, uh, I, I, uh, again, we'll try to, um, capture the performance and diagnostics, and I'll show you that right now. Uh, but the analogy that I want to convey to you guys here is that can you drive a car without a dashboard? No, right? And imagine the cars today and the amount of information that they're providing in the dashboard, right? You have every set of information being recorded by a computer and published to you the mileage, uh, the health of the engine, right? So. That is something you desire, right? That is something you want to uh, understand uh, from an application that you spend money on, right? You need dashboards now. Since you have spent the money on creating those that on, on asking for those dashboards, uh, the idea is that you should be able to create your own dashboards, right? So if you go back to the App Insights portal, um, if you go to overview. As you can see, there are multiple dashboards. There are dashboards now. By default, when you deploy an application, a dashboard will be created. Okay, so that's by default. Uh, you can create more dashboards as you wish. Click on give a name. Uh, I have already created one, so let me just use it. I knew the scenario would come up, so I already created it. Now, when you look at my dashboard, you can just go and edit. Uh, you know, try and find the relevant information that uh, would you would need, right? So what do you want to capture? I may want to capture response distribution, let's say. Um, go to settings. This I'm quite very quickly configuring, so please bear with me and follow through. Uh, the application that you want to create the response distribution of, save the configuration. Here's some additional features of app insights that you might find in. All right. So thanks for attending the session.